about oh uh, let's see well about 48 degrees That's so and we cool. just got audio back sorry folks <laughs> sorry you two yeah. okay. so should i repeat all that <laughs> if you want to yes yeah. reset Wait, rewind. I'm, I'm gonna do the it's gonna be great the quick reset on the weather uh-huh. uh you know that happened last week as well i was I anticipating knew. something so anyway we have had an audio outage nice weather for the week you know mm-hmm. we're uh, weather has warmed uh, as you would expect this time of year, we don't have any really cold or cooler weather, I should say, until the end of the week. And it's not going to be cold, 64, 46 on Friday. Otherwise, it's going to be nice throughout the week, perhaps some uh, showers on Wednesday, early Thursday morning. So, again, it's uh, currently about 48 degrees here in the Music City. So there you are. Yep. It's time to get out and dig in the dirt. Yep, we see Miriam's already ready up, and, and Teresa's out there, and Kay is By out the there, way, and we Mike, did... and Alita, and Lisa, and Sam, and Samara, and Colin. We did have almost an inch of rain yes, uh, Janet. again this week, so we're yes. up uh, 16 inches above that, or thereabouts, for the year. So, mm-hmm. you know, the moisture is great. I, I mean, I don't know of anything that can be done to improve mm-hmm. the conditions. And there have been a, no uh, small amount of preparations being done um, here at Bates Nursery. Yes. We have been uh, part of that preparation comes from our remaining cast members, yes. Caroline Gant, Austin mm-hmm. Lowen. Welcome in, guys. Don't forget Good, Tyler. You, Good, Good morning. morning. I'm okay. There. okay. I'm going to introduce them properly because okay. Tyler has his own camera. He was, yeah. He's got him. Good hey, morning, there Tyler. He is. Welcome in. Tyler Good morning. Rock star. I'm glad that we're all actually giving our voices to you now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Colin did say he missed the intro music and he said, play it again, Tyler. <laughs> it's time there for the yeah. Inside Out, the live show. <laughs> okay, good enough. We, he got that. So, anyway, we are really glad everyone's here today and we are glad to, uh, to get to participate in mm-hmm. springtime. I mean, it's. It's a really exciting time around Bates Nursery because there's so much stuff here. <laughs> there are uh, so many trucks, so many different plants. I'm not sure exactly what you might be looking for. Uh, uh, we probably have it. Well, guys, let me tell you this. I, I, t- I did a little bit of a walkabout with the young Adam this morning, mm-hmm. and I, com- I commented to him that if you don't have it, People do not need it. Yeah. Okay, I mean, you know, I don't know what it would be they're looking for that we don't have. But we every uh, nook, we, every cranny we, has something yeah, in we, it. We have uh, we have made a concerted effort, mm. and uh, kudos to Julie Patterson, yep. our uh, green goods goddess. Everything that comes in here, she's the purchasing agent for that. So thank you, Julie, for doing such a wonderful job as always, mm-hmm. and. You know, what everyone else does is handle all these plants, unload yep. the trucks. Austin's involved in that probably as much as anybody. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, getting these plants off and getting them ready for people to be able to uh, make their selections and you know, at least know what we have to mm-hmm. choose from. So it's um, it's a wild time right now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I mean, we it, it was like perfect timing yesterday. We had a truck in the morning, and it was a large truck. It was the whole semi. Oh, okay, boy. it was like thirty something racks of of shrubs and perennials or whatever. And it took almost the whole day. Also in the annual land with Jane, who's doing a fantastic job down there, getting all the stuff set out off of the racks. So literally everything by about two o'clock yesterday afternoon got set on the lot in straight lines, organized all the annuals on tables. It's everything's ready for y'all to come out yes. and browse everything that we've got from the smallest to the biggest, like yeah. <laughs> anything you want. It's great. Yes, it, it really is. Uh, I, I, and I will second, uh, you know, this is Jane's first season to being uh, heading up. Melissa have, has been the head of the greenhouse for uh, uh, the last many years. And Jane has taken over that task with uh, Melissa moving on to her uh, own venture. Mm -hmm. But Jane's doing a wonderful job. And uh, fortunately, she's got a lot of really good help. Mm -hmm. That's really what it's all about is having, because it's just way way too much to do Mm -hmm. here for 
one or two people to be uh, getting it all done. So, mm-hmm. um, Well, shout out to this one next to me yesterday. She was very busy helping Jane out. Jane has limited space down there, and there was a lot of tropicals that needed to be moved up, and we have space up front to where you can just, right when you get here, you can see that color. And Caroline was busy. You walked a lot yesterday, back wow. and forth. Got a lot of steps in. My yeah, feet were did. so sore. My feet were yeah. sore yesterday, too. It was a it was a big day, but yeah, yeah you did a lot to bring stuff up. You don't have to keep up with your steps if you work at Bates. Not That's at right. all. You, you do not you get have might, enough. but you don't have to. Mm-hmm. The one thing that get... caught my eye during the walk about this morning, those blood goods on the trellises up front. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're they're oh, outstanding. Oh, my uh-huh. folks. I mean, it is just up in the, the dew and the water and the if irrigation. If you've got a big flat wall on, uh, on oh. the east side of the house. Mm. Uh, they I saw be... three of them out there, too, folks. There's only there. three. Okay. So, yeah. All right. I'm sure that... Um, there have been some inquiries. People uh-huh. have uh-huh. people have things that they're curious about how to deal with. I bet you have those questions all queued we up. We have a few, uh-huh. and by a few I mean a lot. So let's go <laughs> ahead and dive into these questions. Our first question we're going to start with is about the weather. So they are asking, with regard to the conditions here in Nashville over the next month and a half, I am still a bit concerned about nightly temperatures. The AccuWeather forecast out to May 6th and 7th show a few nights with lows in the upper 40s. It's just a few nights, but still with recent to move any production plants that I started from seed. So basically, they have some plants they want to harden off. They're planning on starting the process April 15th and then moving them into raised beds May 1st. They're wondering our thoughts on that. Yeah, well, uh, I, I, I bet you that Austin and I come down pretty close on mm-hmm. this. You know, mm-hmm. at this transitional season, you need to be thinking in terms of two things, not just... How cold is it getting overnight? But how warm is it getting where the plants are? So you, you really need to try to run these new starts as cool as possible. Mm. If they're in an area where it's getting up to 85 or 90 degrees because you've got them protected, uh, then you're airing on the other side of the uh, uh, of the equation because they're going to get spindly and flimsy. So you you may actually be at the point where it's going to be to your advantage to go ahead and get those in the ground. The ground is is warming up pretty nice. Now, we've had some cool – we've had a few cool days, but it's it's on the way. So if it's not currently quite as warm, I don't think there's any real concern about things being chilled as a result of soil temperature, and there's nothing in the forecast that would would, uh, indicate it air temperature wise mm-hmm. so what do you think I, I think that soil temperature right i think that's a good idea is to like actually get them in the ground now like don't keep them above the ground in pots with this warmer weather we're about 85 on monday like my god wow. five degrees less than 90 really so like the soil temperature is still fairly yeah. chilly like david said so getting them in the ground will keep that plant nice and like stocky and sturdy it won't like really push a ton of growth because of the ground temps but the upper 40s y'all with even the warmest of warm season stuff is not going to damage any of your plants even like watermelon or something that likes it as hot as can be right like the upper 40s does not injure plants at, at that temperature Absolutely. so and, yeah. and in case we weren't clear on that we are talking about a uh, vegetable and gardening plants yeah know, things that are not annual tropicals. in nature not no, and we're not talking about trees and shrubs, that right. kind of thing. So it's just those little seed starts that you probably have been working on for the last perhaps month or two, depending Six on weeks. when. Yeah, yeah. So there Sweet. you go. But you know, it, and as accurate as accu weather can be, if you're looking out much more than three days, s- yes, three, day, yeah. three days. <laughs> It's not going to be very accurate. No, I, I mean, contend that uh, they have uh, trends and models. I think and... a ten-day forecast is a three-day forecast, which is pretty reliable, yeah. with statistical data of a week added on to the back right. end. So, of it. so mm-hmm. now, uh, last year I made a mistake with some of the seedlings that I did. I took them out, took them straight to the garden without getting any kind of a transition, and I lost about two thirds of them because they got sunburned. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just burn up. I mean, it was it was disheartening, but I, we lived through. Yeah, and that's that's the hardening off process right. we always talk about. And bring straight from the home or under a grow light into the full sun right. is a very uh, it's a quick 
you know, like thing that they don't necessarily want. We kind of want to slow. It can be a quick death. A very quick death. Yeah, the quicker than glyphosate, sure. actually. Yeah. So I mean, uh, the sun. Yeah, the sun is intense. Way more intense than your grow lights are. So I mean, mm -hmm. getting them up underneath the porch to where like the you know sunlight is there and it's present, but it's not directly onto those tiny right. little seedlings. So yeah, then general rule of thumb: the smaller the seedling, the more kind of hardening off it needs. But it okay. happens fairly quickly. Yep. You know, within a week, really, if you get them out and start getting them, you know, into that, and then you can move them out into the full sun whenever they kind of. You can almost just kind of tell you know you can kind of look at it and be like okay be you're, you're sturdy we're enough. ready yeah. you're stocky enough to get on mm -hmm. out there and, and and taste that sun so and if by chance you have seedlings that have gotten a little spindly on you then it's a good idea to transplant them into a slightly larger container but plant them deep so that you support that stem okay. so that it doesn't mm -hmm. flop on you too bad so yep. anyway we better move along yeah, we better. <laughs> we've got yeah. we put a lot of uh, time into that one but uh -huh. but it is a timely question it is very good mm -hmm. All right. We've only got one question about this today, but I feel like there will be more. I've heard that cicadas can be harmful to young dogwood trees and they should be wrapped to keep them protected. What is your take on this? Mm, Any Christmas other paper. trees that may need to be wrapped? I have two small Tokyo tower fringe trees. Yeah. Christmas mm. paper. <laughs> Wrap them. Okay. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Got to put a Wrap bow them on up them like too. Christmas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I really don't think there's anything to really get, worry about with cicadas. I had this question yesterday with young trees. I mean, they do put they do put a little hole in like the bark of the stem, but it's not like a, a boring insect or something to where it's like tunneling into the vascular system of the plant. It's just literally a little hole they put in so they can so they can molt off of that. And it's like I I've never I've lived here my whole life. We've had cicadas. I don't I've never heard of any plant related injury. From cicadas. I yeah, the only, the only injury happens there. And what is going on with the cicada? Number one, mm -hmm. they do not feed. So mm -hmm. you're not going to, they don't chew up foliage. They don't, what, no. what they mate and then they lay eggs. And they have a little thing called an ovipositor. Excuse it's a little me? thing. An ovipositor. Ovipositor that is like a hypodermic needle <laughs> that they can push underneath the cambium layer of small branches and limbs and they'll lay eggs through that. Little bitty eggs. Little bitty eggs mm -hmm. underneath there. And as those eggs grow, you'll see it, the stem begin to swell. And as it begins to swell, this is the only opportunity where damage can occur. If it's a very small stem, it is possible for that stem to get weak and flag off. But it will not kill the tree. The tree. Yeah. It may, you might possibly lose a branch here or mm -hmm. there. But you know these things have been going on for eons. You know this yeah. is this eons. is the this is the year uh, where it doesn't really affect us because the line for where the two broods uh, intersect or come close to butt up against each other is in central Illinois. So we don't get that more northern neener, brood. Neener. The one we're going to get the same one we always get. What we don't know is how much or how intense or how severe it is. Right. We we've had one. We've had years in the past that were incredibly intense and others that were barely noticeable. And well, we don't he, know until they emerge which way this will You know, what's weird is you got the brood 13 and the brood 17. Right. The brood 17 comes out every 13 years. The brood 13 comes out every 17 years. Yeah, they, they, they kind of they they got their new biology. What's, what's up with that? They, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a little strange. And there are many other broods outside yes. of that also. At they, least 17. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we've got at least 17 more questions, okay. so right, let's, let's do, do it. Up, Josh. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not what I said. I How can down. I get rid of pink primrose from my garden bed, which has taken over the entire area? Mm. Good luck. This yeah. is one thing that I have not planted. So Yes, I'm surprised, actually. I, you haven't. I am, too. I've got the like upright evening primrose, um, and that is a little bit invasive, but it's not as bad as like the pink primrose, which looks like a ground cover. Yeah. Though that, it is really, really pretty. It's gorgeous. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But it is noxious. It it can it is bad. Like you and once you have it, you almost can't get rid of it. I don't it spreads think like you fire. Can. Like it's crazy. It covers the ground. And like if that's what you want and you have this area that's just like awful and it's annoying to you and you haven't been able to like get grass to grow or like whatever's have it's rocky. Like you could plant that, I guess, and it'd be fine. But it really takes over and getting rid of it is very hard to do. Yeah, so. I feel like it just keeps reseeding itself. I do see hillsides covered in it and it's, I mean, it is gorgeous. It, it is really pretty. I'll give you that. But yeah, I mean, I guess the first step, like she just said, is is that if it goes to seed, like you got to cut off the flowers so it doesn't go to seed. Okay. Like that's probably your first step. And then just you physically dig it up. 
Yep. Like, mm-hmm. you know. And dig it up. And, and dig it up. Dig it up more. Digging. It keeps popping up. Just like I'm doing with my passion flower, four o'clocks and mint that I have planted oh, near mint. a garden. The, okay, Woo! the mint was very stupid of me. <laughs> but I did plant it in a pot and it rooted out under and... It's I all over. That remark. Yeah, it's, it took me three years to get rid of it. I'll never be rid of it. Wine. I yeah. mean, I've dug out this garden bed twice. I thought I got all the mint, and it just keeps coming back. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Mojitos. We have, an, mojitos just we have an area that's our sold order area that mm-hmm. was heavily infested in mint. We dug all that out, put down weed barrier fabric, uh, we, heavy gravel, mm-hmm. and I have... And I've continued to put down non-selective herbicide, uh, and it still keeps coming back. (laughs) It It never dies. It is very, very determined. Uh It never dies. Well, speaking of mint and stuff, let's switch Mm -hmm. to a question that kind of refers to that or can. Mm -hmm. I want to grow my own tea. Do you carry tea plant, and will it do well in Nashville? They're hey. not talking about mint, but that is an option. You but, know what they're talking about? You know where tea comes from, camellia. all tea. It's a camellia. camellia. Isn't that great? Camellia sinensis. And mm-hmm. yes, we do stock it. We actually have some currently at the nursery right now. Um, it is a camellia, and it is a, it's a pretty hardy camellia, actually. So camellias can be a little eh here. You know, for the most part, they're fine. But we've had a couple winters the past couple years that a lot of camellias have been injured. Uh, but sinensis seems to be a little bit more hardy. And yes, we stock it. It'll live here. Get it in a spot that's not like stupid cold or like extra windy over the winter time you know and like some good morning to early afternoon sun with a break from the afternoon sun around here and it's going to do well you know i put mine in a bad spot you know why why got mowed down Uh, (laughs) a couple times and then it never came back that's just a a big theme for me in my beds there are all kinds of there are all kinds of plants that you can grow herbal teas from right which is why you can do that pepper i mean there's so many different things i grow that i use for teas yeah, so like it a lot doesn't of just herbs. have to be that. Bergamot, mm-hmm. right? Bergamot yep. is an additive to some of these. That's what's in Earl Grey. Lemongrass. Mm-hmm. Yes. All sorts of herbs that yeah. are infused with tea, but I the agree. main ingredient is, is camellia. That's yeah. the tea. Camellia sinensis. Mm-hmm. Wow. We can do it with that. Let's get another question in, y'all. Best plants to plant around a culvert and underground electrical wire, wire to help with erosion, preferably native. <sighs> Ooh, grass. <laughs> I always go switchgrass when it comes to native yeah. for erosion control. Like, yeah, I mean, that is a good one. Or little blue stem or big blue stem. Uh-huh. I mean, that's a great native grass that will do the same thing. Yeah, there's a number of grasses that'll do well here in that, and uh, they're just really, really good for erosion control because their roots are in- insane, like extensive, insane. Uh, they just hold on to the earth. I just mean, that, try that's digging what I'm going one with. up. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ask yeah. Ben Trest, who works here, one of our landscape specialists. He just had to dig up a bunch of switch grass. So much switch grass. The next I got day he some. came in and he was like dead. Yeah. <laughs> from digging up all he that. He said switchgrass. it was so heavy. There's actually a really cool uh, sage who works here at the nursery and is amazing and does an awesome job with inventory. Um, had this on her desk and then I've seen it online, but it's all of the native grasses and it shows their roots and how deep they go. Oh, yeah. And it's a really really cool image to look at. I'll see if I can find it and share. It. Mm-hmm. Um, but Sharpen it's, it's so your shovel yes. yeah. before you start digging. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And keep a file ready to resharpen as needed. Mm-hmm. Or, Correct. Or your spade. And it's, maybe you could loosen up that clay with something. With something, yeah. Um, what could you loosen it up well, with? Well, you know, I'm thinking that uh, if you're going to plant, uh, you know, whether they're native grasses or whether they are uh, anything. Really? Trees, shrubs, ground covers. Yep. It could be garden plants, annuals. Mm-hmm. There's an earth mix product that's especially tailored just for that application, really? Josh. Yes. yes. Go out to earthmix.net. Uh-huh. The entire selection of earth mix garden products is available there. And I don't mm-hmm. go to this tab much, but you can simply click on the products tab and it shows you all of the different products Ooh. that are available. Super sex are by Super special order, sex. by the way. So those are not. Uh, something that you'll just walk in and get, but all the different products and a lot of detail about what all they are comprised of and what their functionality Mm. is. So check all that out over at earthmix.net. Also, one of the big important things you'll find at earthmix.net is where it's available. And as you can see, over here in the Tennessee area, there are a lot to choose from. And they're all very tightly bunched. And then we've got one way over here in Idaho. Those are Victory Gardens Nursery. And Tyler and I were fortunate to get to uh, have an online meeting with them yesterday. We really enjoyed uh, 
getting to meet the entire staff and talk to them about Earth Mix Garden products, and they are uh, genuinely thrilled about it. So, and I understand this today is their first day to be open for spring, so they are soft uh, opening. Yes. Congrats, guys! Yes, mm-hmm. so they're getting ready to do it today. So, uh, have a great day, guys! And no matter where you are, uh, particularly in Tennessee and Kentucky or northern Alabama, uh-huh. there is an Earth Mix location near you. Mm-hmm. So check out uh, any one of the locations. You can simply put your address in for turn-by-turn directions for the one that is nearest to you, or zoom in and check out all those uh, from Memphis, you know, Millstone uh, Nursery and uh, Gifts over in East Ten- uh, West Tennessee, Uh all of them. Just check them out. I'll, if I start going down names, I'll, I'll start butchering. So I'm not oh, yes. going to do yeah. that. But what you get with Earth Mixed Garden products is 100% organic. And more than just organic, Josh, more. It, it is the most viable and yes. productive soil you can get. Mm-hmm. It's not that hard to make something organic. The more difficult thing is just to provide those organics with a sufficient amount of nutritional needs that the plants really are looking for. I'm talking about endo and ecto mycorrhiza fungi. I'm talking about humic acid. Mm. I'm talking about the best inputs. Do what, Josh? To get the best output. And that's the way it works at Earthmix Garden Products. So success does indeed begin at the ground level. Check it out online and at a garden center near you, earthmix.net. And if you're wanting to know, well, I don't even know how much I need, go over here to the soil calculator mm-hmm. in the upper right corner. Yeah. Click on that, and it'll you just pick the product and put your bed dimensions and how deep you want it. It'll tell you exactly how many bags you need. So you don't even have to guess at that. So check it out over at earthmix.net. And uh, thank you for giving us moments to talk about that. Absolutely. Earthmix Garden Products. Mm-hmm. Hey, Tyler. Hi. I think you need to go out to Idaho and do a, uh, you know, physical inventory for the folks out there, <laughs> just to run out there and make sure that the merchandising is done. I, I might right. need to do a uh, coffee tasting yes. as well. They, uh-huh. um, they seem to have a lot of great products in addition to that. Oh, so speaking uh, of traveling to the and boss. going around places, uh-huh. Tyler, are you talking about what's in bloom? With Austin. Hey. 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 It's time. Hey. Y'all, there's a lot of stuff blooming. <laughs> he in. walked in here with a stack of paper. Actually, it was just one paper. Yeah, but just one got, paper It's stack. full of stuff. <laughs> there is. I had to do it last night. I was sitting down thinking about what's blooming. All right, so here we go. Let's talk about the ground Dude, covers first. Night. Look, the creeping flocks is still going. The candy mm-hmm. tuff, still going. The vinca, still going. And I talked to Caroline this morning. I asked her about her dianthus. Dianthus is blooming. That's wow. always pretty. You have Mine a pink is one, right? gorgeous. I've got fire witch, and it is... I want to plant more. Mm-hmm. Dianthus, really good mm-hmm. plant. Let's go to the perennials that are blooming. Your irises, the state flowers, still going. Columbine, going great. Woodland phlox, the little blue. We got so mm. many right now. They're really pretty. You ought to grow that one for the shade. Yep. Bleeding heart, you've got to grow, y'all. Trust me, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, cat mint, Caroline, you told me this morning, your yep. cat mint's blooming. It, it seems, seems early, early, but, but mine uh, is hey, blooming. It's poking, looking good, and then honestly, probably one of my favorites, Baptisia. God. If you're not growing Baptisia, you're seriously missing out. We've got a great selection right now, y'all. Okay, moving to the vines. Hey, cross vine blooming. Carolina Jessamine still going. That pretty little yellow that smells good. Mm. Hey, I noticed Clematis on my way in this morning. Everybody knows how much I love Clematis, especially wow. this one. Mm. And, Josh, for you, your wisteria is yes. in bloom, sir. Yes, it is. And it smells fantastic. <laughs> it is wonderful. It is dangling from the trees out in the woods. I've seen it. Wisteria, mm. have a sturdy sturdy thing if you want to grow wisteria okay yep. okay moving on to the shrubs and trees this was interesting to me this morning calicanthus the sweet shrub mm-hmm. that is in bloom that is a growing machine by the way mm. that is a champ uh, little red blooms if you don't know what i'm talking about google it calicanthus it's a large fast growing plant looks kind of tropical even mm-hmm. um y'all it's it's viburnum season it is vi- the double file viburnums the macrocep the s- chinese snowball the eastern snowball the one that smells good. What's that one? Uh, the Burkwood. Yes, the Burkwood types. <laughs> those are blooming, and they smell fantastic. Some of the biggest bloomers you're going to see, those, I mean, Chinese snowball. The blooms are this big, y'all. They're adorned over the, the whole plant. The size of your head. Humongous, beautiful. I've got one in the yard. I love it. It's fantastic. My daughters were picking flowers, love, from it last night. Wow. All viburnums should be worth a grow for the shade or the sun. Like, they can live yes. anywhere. They're great. 
Good plant. Dogwood's still beautiful. Of course, everybody loves dogwoods. If you live in Middle Tennessee or really lots of places, the dogwoods pink, are beautiful. Yeah, the pink yeah. ones and red ones oh, this year are you just great. can't. You just can't beat it. Red buds are still going, but they're actually starting to leaf out a little bit. So they got this yeah. two-tone. They look really cool right now. The leaves that come out with the blooms behind them, like it's kind of cool. It really looks nice. Uh, hey, azaleas and rhododendrons, y'all. What's better? Nothing. What's nothing better? Nothing is better. When they're in full Petunias. show, nothing better even i mean in full show there it might even be better than tunia's really i'm, I'm gonna say oh, it. Uh-oh. Said it. so oh. we just recorded Uh-oh. him Stop saying it. that right so uh, that's gonna be a sound i said clip it in full bloom in full I'm bloom they're better take. than tunia's not throughout the whole season okay making a new sound clip. okay here we go Quans <laughs> and cherries still going but they're just about out that's kind of a quick bloomer but they yep. still look nice mm-hmm. uh from last week i talked about the black cherries our natives still blooming paulonia tomentosa those purple ones you're seeing in the woods that invasive tree that grows like a weed mm. still going and, and dropping flowers all over the neighborhood yes, in they the Smyrna. Do. And then they'll throw oh, seed oh. and you'll see them pop up everywhere. Hey, one of the nasty ones that's going right now, that bush honeysuckle, that nasty invasive weed yeah. is really blooming right now. So sorry, but that's happening. And then also uh, something I thought was interesting, the deciduous magnolias and the bridal respirea. This is like a, a number two bloom for them. Because some people cut back their bridal respirea, and they see that they bloom about two weeks later than if you didn't cut them back. So those are blooming. And the deciduous magnolias, yeah, they got whacked by a freeze, but they're throwing some secondary blooms, and they're mine still is, looking pretty. But mine are much smaller, uh-huh. and they're less uh, colorful. Less vibrant. Yeah, yeah I've it's noticed that very well. interesting. It is interesting. Mm-hmm. So that's what's in bloom. And hey, Tyler, throw up that picture if you don't mind. Yeah. Drum roll. Hey, oh. shout out to my dad and my stepmom out in East Texas. This wow. is not here. This is in East Texas, but I had to give my talk to him the other day. Drift. Unfortunately, my dad lost his dog of 15 years. Oh, no. oh. Very, very sad to hear that, daddy. But you got some pine. I what we planted those pine trees. I didn't. He did. But they're out there getting big. But look <laughs> at those roses. The coral drift. Oh, and he lives about drift. an about an hour away from Tyler, Texas, which is you probably know Tyler, Rose Texas has Kingdom. the Rose Kingdom. And I was so mad at my dad. I'm, I mean, I'm happy for him. Uh-huh. I'm happy for you, Daddy. I hope you're listening. But I'm mad at you because roses grow so much better in East Texas than they do here. He was like, Yeah, I mean, besides, you know, I fertilize them once in the spring and I'll cut back a wild hair here and there. But for the most part, that's all. I do, and I'm like, ugh. That is not good. Mad. Jealous. Jealous. As Austin Jealous. says, clean and green. They are clean and green and blooming really on are. every stem. Oh. Not that one yet, Tyler. Oh, sorry. Uh-uh. <laughs> Keep it with the roses. Daddy, you're doing a good job. Gail, good to talk to you all the other night, growing the beautiful roses in East Texas. Good work. Enjoy that back patio in that lake. Oh. Uh-huh. And that lake? Look, they're right on that lake. Do you not lake. see the water there? There's man made oh, lakes all the time. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't have my it. glasses on. Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Outed. But so are we going to all go visit your dad, go swim at the lake, and oh, broadcast yep. live Just from there? Look at the road. Yeah, well, I guess we could. A couple Saturdays from now, get ready for a road trip. <laughs> all right, here we yeah. go. Okay. We'll how's take it, your van. How's this <laughs> bandwidth down there? Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> the, that's it's probably pretty good. He's he's itching for stuff to do. He just recently retired, and he's like ready to do stuff. So. He's uh, it was just good to talk to you the other night, Dad. And uh, yeah, keep growing them roses. All right, Geo Road Trip. Hey, we got a okay. question about roses, so let's go ahead and get into that. Planted knockout roses two weeks ago, and they now look like they're dying. <laughs> Any idea of what this could be? <sighs> If it happens quickly, it's usually always a water issue, and it's usually always not enough. Now, that's quick, y'all. I mean, we shouldn't be... What kind were they? Knockouts, Knockouts. which are the easiest roses to grow. Um, Now, could it be that, like, sawfly larva that I've got? All of a sudden, my carefree wonder, I mean, if I didn't know that that, it wasn't dying, all of my leaves look white or a little bit brown, and, I mean... To somebody who doesn't know much about roses, it could look like it's dying. Yeah, probably going to have point. to have some better photographs or yes. some photographs yeah. and with some close-ups to give us an idea because there's a lot of speculative and the treatment uh, or how to deal with it would be very different depending on what it is. Exactly, so. yeah. Send us some pictures. But Caroline's got a good point. The sawfly larvae, which is the little, what we just commonly call rose slugs, are on the back yeah. sides of the leaves. Those just hit. I had a yeah. customer yesterday just showed me pictures. You told me yesterday you noticed it. It was like overnight, too. There it, was, the leaves were clean, and then all... All of a sudden, every oh, single leaf, except now the new growth. They just... got nothing else going on. That's yeah. what they yeah. do. Yeah. That's what they out. do. Yeah, like they'll lay 50 eggs on a rose, and they'll all hatch pretty much simultaneously. Mm. And then they immediately start eating on your rose. So you'll right. start to see these brown, like Caroline's talking about. And then that'll wear through to a hole, um, and even irregular holes. Like, it's not, you know, perfect. So... 
the Soulfly larvae is here, y'all. Get ready. There's like three generations per season every year here in Middle Tennessee. So you really ready. need to knock them down right now. Early, yes. Yeah. You got to get on it. I had a, I talked to the Rose Society whenever I did a speech out there, and I talked to them. They're literally spraying at least once a month when it comes to, and they're using Captain Jacks, which is spinosad, is a is a uh, the chemical that's used, and that's what they use to combat the rose slugs because they're here every year. Captain Jacks. It's, That's the brand name, yeah. It's an insecticide. It's an insecticide, yes. Okay. And the, the the active is spinosad, which is good for for worm control, typically. You know, yep. caterpillars mm-hmm. and larvae. And it's not extremely. Um, to- you know, it doesn't kill on both ends. Yeah, you know, it's it only not- kills the target. It's it's pretty uh, um, environmentally friendly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, well, that's, that's a happening. Good thing. Cool. Yeah, I was bummed when I saw that on my Carefree Wonder because it's one of my favorite plants. It's, yeah, a so. gorgeous rose that does pretty well here. Mm-hmm. We got a boxwood question. Ow. Oh, are you excited? Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> With the heavy rain this week, my younger boxwoods are l- flopping to the ground. Should I prune them? Can I do this now? Should I wait? And then they said, P.S. I love the show and have learned so much from y'all. <laughs> Well, thank you for thank that. You. Uh, yeah. I want to yeah. learn more from you, though. Younger, but flopping to the ground? I mean, could it be the new growth and now it's... Like turned it's down, turned I guess. Down. Uh, it yeah. could be. Yeah, we haven't really had any rains of that magnitude. <laughs> I mean, we were supposed to have them, but it didn't really materialize. We did maybe get an inch, but we didn't get like three inches was All at once. what they were talking yeah. about, which were in a deluge fashion. We did not get that, so... Yeah, I... I think that probably by the time you reach uh, late morning, midday today, they should be dried off and standing up. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's like, you know, I've noticed boxwood with like really tender new growth get rained on heavily and then kind of lay down a little bit. But like that growth is going to harden up over the next week or two. That's going to get a lot more firm. And that should, like David just said, it should stand back up and... Get I don't the it, ground that seems dramatic. That yeah. does seem dramatic. Yeah. But like I want to see just like hey, you know send a picture of, of this one too. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. descriptions are dramatic. Exactly. Perhaps, are. perhaps over <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> like this. Hey, one. stop it. Mm-hmm. Next Never. Question. I won't ever stop it. <laughs> hey, we have talked a little bit about sending in photos. The way to send them in is email to gardeninginsideout at gmail.com. That's mm-hmm. the best way. You can also send them over Messenger on Facebook or DM us on Instagram. But again, gardening inside out at gmail.com. Hey, By Tyler, are we ready way. to put some pictures up? Mm. Uh, Speaking, yeah. of, Speaking photos, of photos, so we're going to go into our photo <clears throat> section of the broadcast. We got quite a few pictures in this week, so we're going to throw up... Our first one. Did I send you that? I'm pretty sure you did. What is well, this? look at nice that grass. grass. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. Well, look at yeah. that grass. That is gorgeous. Tyler, let's go ahead and move forward, and then I'll I'll go back. Oh, I figured out How what it I is. How do I protect or deal with tree roots that rise above the yeah, ground? Yeah, that's right. This is happening to one of my silver maples. Okay. Well, you know why it's happening? It's because it's, it's a silver, silver maple. maple. Yes. Oh. I've got this issue. I have about I, at least 15 silver maples planted. It actually is gorgeous along my driveway. It's lined with silver maples, but yeah, I've got roots all, all along the ground. All level. maples, to some degree, have the issue. Mm-hmm. They're going to have surfacing roots, mm-hmm. uh, but silver maples, because they grow so fast, are the worst. Mm-hmm. And as they grow pro- progressively slower, uh, all the way down to like sugar maples or Norway maples. We don't have a lot of those in the area, but Mm-mm. they're much less simply because they grow a lot slower. But there, it will happen on those as well. You can, you know, add a little soil, and but don't want to. You don't want to pile soil around the, the trunk. trunk. You just mm-hmm. want to, if you need to get it where you can mow over it and let you know grass grow through. That's okay to do, but don't go in there and be cutting them out. No. Yeah. no, I mean, we can't yeah, stop yeah. nature, y'all. Big trees are big trees. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's you know, what they do. Yeah, they look kind of cool. One of the things yeah. to do is to take those areas and, you know, perhaps mulch. And do yes. s- if it's a really big sh- uh, tree that sh- flows some shade, is to go ahead and start converting it to a shade garden. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. Great. It yeah, that's absolutely good. Make works. a new bed around it mm-hmm. where you don't have to mow over that right. big old root and bumping yourself around. Right, but that's you don't want you don't want to go in there and put the mulch right up against the bark of the tree either any more than well, it's not yeah, as bad. It's, it's a little more forgiving. You don't yeah. want to make a mulch volcano. That's mm-hmm. what you're talking about. Yes. Have, you see some pictures on the internet of uh, examples of that, but three inches of mulch is not going to be any negative thing at all if you're going to make a mulch area it will not hurt the tree it won't hurt the things you're planting in there a garden gnome 
Yeah. Yeah, you got to get a gnome out you there. You got too. to. Yeah. And they're very uh, adjustable and adaptable yes. uh, sun wise. You know, the gnomes? They, they can handle yeah. full sun yeah. or full shade. Okay. Tyler, so, send me a text. He's over there doing yeah, hand we, signals, and we, I have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, you don't know what, you know. <laughs> You don't know what that means? I don't. I was trying to hand my phone to Austin. He wouldn't look at me. (laughs) I'm sorry. Tyler, are we ready to throw up the next picture? Or was that about the next photo? Ooh. No, no. I found somebody sent us a photo of a flopping boxwood, and so I was trying to get it. Oh, you were trying to send it to him? Oh, gotcha. Okay. I was wondering if that's the same person. No, this is the azalea. Oh, this is an azalea question. I know what that is. Do you know what that is? I know exactly what that is. So this comes from Kathy. She says, my azaleas are blooming, but the foliage is so ugly. Can you tell me the problem and how to remedy? Yes, that's called azalea lace bug. It is the most common pest for azaleas, and it makes them look like that whitish. They got the black tar spots on the back sides of the leaves. It, like I said, it is the most common pest on azaleas, and it makes them look the worst, okay? So, what was it, Kathy? Mm-hmm. Kathy. Kathy. Mm-hmm. Let that thing bloom, and then you're going to give it a severe cutback, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and remove all those leaves as much as we can. Right. And then out we're gonna of have the to, bed. Pull yep, them, pull get them, them out of there. Yes. Burn them. Do what you wish. Throw them in a the trash bag. Whatever. Get rid of that. We're going to hope for a new flush on the leaves, which should occur, and then we're going to probably need to still treat with an insecticide, which you can come out and chat with me about that, and we can... Get you a good one, probably, you know, like I said, the Captain Jacks will work, um, like we talked about earlier, permethrin will work. Um, but that is a little bit trickier of a pest to get rid of, so we're going to need something a little bit more stout. But the good news is you let them bloom, so the bees are not going to be active. Whenever you do spray, we're not going to hurt any bees if we have to use synthetic right. chemicals. But And by cutting them back, you rid yourself of most of the problem. Yeah. So you don't have a – you just get all rid of all that. They're, they're going to be ready to flush back out. It's right. a good time to fertilize them at that point also. Yes. And then you'll be ready to spray and take care of the problem and hopefully prevent it from recurring. But, mm-hmm. but don't try to don't try to compost those leaves. Don't do anything with them other than just put them in the garbage or yes. put, burn There's, them. Like, yeah, no I'll, real reason to keep those up. I yeah. Mean, yeah. So that'll be helpful. There you go, Kathy. There you go, Kathy. Right. So so here's, here's, your here's the boxwood photo. This is a new gen freedom. Okay. Yeah. That makes more sense now. Okay, the new well, gen freedom. That's just long growth. It needs it to is. be trimmed. Yeah. And you can, yeah. So now this totally makes sense. I get it. Yeah. The stems on the new gen freedom are a little bit weaker. I'm not going to lie. Uh-huh. They, they're a very <laughs> soft, delicate little plant and they're really attractive. They are. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that could certainly be shortened a little bit and just take it to a spot you want it to be at and kind of shorten all the way around. And that should beef up those stems a little bit. Now, get that, it closer to the wall if you can. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and at that stage of size, the way I would approach trimming those, because of the way they're all flopped, is get a good sharp pair of like Felco hand pruners, grab all of it up and in your left hand, yes. say, where you've got all the branches pulled up and then just snip straight across. Uh-huh. You're going to cut that back probably close to halfway back. Wow. And if you do that, and then it flushes back out. You're not going to have those floppy stem situations. Mm-hmm. They have been allowed to go for too long between trimmings. Mm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, nice. you're gonna you're gonna do good work by doing that too. You're gonna giving do them good that trim. It's work. gonna it's gonna bush tight, which is yep. gonna be nice. That's what you want. Cool. Mm-hmm. Let's keep going, Ty. Okay. Tyler. <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> um, uh, throw, okay, bring up the question while I bring up the photos because I had to interrupt. Our We've sequence. got one about a Japanese maple. Oh. Somebody bought a Japanese maple a few years back at Bates Nursery and Garden Center, where Bravo. we are. Bring- you know, people can make mistakes with planting because they don't understand mm-hmm. what the ultimate growth habit is going to be. That's and that's right. what you call getting good information on the front end. And that's what we try to dispense here at Bates Nursery and Garden Centers, not just to give you the best plants and mm-hmm. the best things to plant your plants with, such as earth mixed garden yes. products. We also uh, have a plethora of expertise. You know, this is all we do. We do not do anything else. It's This is it. And so if you want to know mm-hmm. about plant care and culture and how to get the best performance out of it, mm-hmm. uh, we understand those things. And if you've got a particular spot, you know, take some. if you've got a photograph, you can bring that along yes. or you can just describe it to us. Sun, shade, wet conditions. We've got plants that can adapt to most things, but not everything can adapt to all. So you don't want to put a... A plant that's going to get way large in a smaller area. Yeah. And um, Japanese maple in that photograph there is a really great example of planting something in an area that can be maintained and managed Perfect for spot. decades. So it will it will be 
only more beautiful as time passes. So mm-hmm. regardless of what you've got going on in your landscape, maybe you're just ready to plant annuals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have got, I mean, if we're not fully stocked now, we never will be. We mm-hmm. have a, a complete selection. Everything from uh, edgeratum to zinnias and well, cool. everything in between. So you just need to come see us to be able to understand um, the selection we've got. Hanging baskets, ferns, yeah. uh, a complete line of tropicals in Caroline's area, as well as all of the decorative containers. And, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the best soils on the planet, Earth Mix Garden Products. Mm-hmm. So. Proganics I if you're doing indoor things or Proganics O for the outdoor things. Mm -hmm. Check all those out while you're here. We're here to help you uh, get the right plant in the right place the first time. And that's Bates Nursery and Garden Center where we've been beautifying Nashville since 1932. My grandmother started this endeavor way back in the day. And there you see her on screen. Uh, (laughs) Yes, there she is. Quickly. (laughs) There she is. So, now she's gone. Yep. And so come out and see us. Uh, this, Like I said, this is all we do. We're conveniently located a mile north of Briley Parkway at exit 19 on White's Creek Pike. Mm-hmm. That's just minutes from Rivergate, Opry Mills, Nashville West, downtown Nashville. And it's worth the drive no matter where you're coming from. We routinely have people make the drive. They may only do it once a year, but they come from considerable distance, sometimes different states. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yeah. those states are not depression or anxiety. <laughs> and it's not a state they're, of confusion because you know where you're coming. <laughs> That's, so, right. That's right. right. So come see us, Bates Nursery and Garden Center, and uh, check us out online at BatesNursery.com. All of our uh, information is searchable online. And if you, by chance, want to get a weekly little missive from me, Here's the newsletter section just down below the header. Scroll down the page. You can put your name and email address and click on the little box that says, I agree to be emailed, and then hit the subscribe button. And if you do that, uh, you'll hear from me once a week, once a week only. And uh, try to keep you uh, informed and apprised of what's going on seasonally and horticulturally. And maybe if there's some particular challenges coming up, like cicadas, there might be an mm. uh, article forthcoming on that. You just never know. So With recipes? Sh- uh, you can. They're very yes, edible. They're, they're tasty, they're, I hear. Yeah, yeah. So I'd pull the wings off. Oh, you're supposed to. Uh, the, but the dogs and the birds seem to like Oh, yeah. Them. So anyway. Corgis in particular. Stay tuned for that. Uh, Bates Nursery and Garden Center. So come out and see us. We're open from 9 until 4 o'clock, Monday through Saturday, noon until 4 on Sundays. And we've got... What we feel like is really adequate parking now. We've mm-hmm. we've already been tested on that a couple of times, and so we hope you can get in and get out easily without having to, um, you know, wade through mud or anything like that. So, mm-hmm. come so much us. nicer. Yes. Yeah. Heard from a customer this week saying that they are going to stop here on their vacation. So we appreciate <laughs> you making us a stop on your, on your vacation vacay. destination, oh. and hopefully you can take a, a little living one with you back and. Get your grow on. Uh, I even Earth spoke, spoke briefly yeah. with some ladies from Atlanta this week who made the drive up. So um, nice. they they mm-hmm. they found items on our website and they go, yeah, we're going to Nashville and get those things. So you know, thank you, ladies. And did they go woo when they were here? They were. Uh, they might have, they but you know what will make people go woo? Mm-hmm. What? What? I got to know. What's all this color in What's here? What's in room with Caroline? My gosh. So we were just talking about the nursery and we've talked about back in the annuals with Jane, uh, mm-hmm. back in that greenhouse where they are so busy. She's killing it. She is mm-hmm. killing it. So we brought in a sample of what we have all around the nursery, all of the tropicals. So just behind my head and David's, we've got a Christmas palm. So this is a really, really cool one out in its natural habitat. It's going to get giant here. Not so much, but it will make a great plant by your pool. Um, you can bring it in if you want through the winter to overwinter it and then put Put it back outside in a planter. Why is These it called a really, Christmas palm? Really, I've always wanted. I don't know. I don't know. Either. I am not sure. It doesn't remind me of Christmas whatsoever. I'm mm-hmm. sure it has something to do with 
Something. Something. <laughs> something. Something that happens in December. Is that a Chamaderia around... cultivar or is it a different No, uh, it's a different one. Wow. It's um, Andonii, I believe, is okay. what it is. And what? then right next to it, we've got hibiscus. Y'all, we are full oh, with no. hibiscus. A lot of them are blooming or have mm. some really good buds. So they Unfortunately, will be we have soon. no low biscus. We only hibiscus. hibiscus. Only yeah. hibiscus. But speaking of low, down in front of the TV, yes. we've got Diplodenia. We also have Mandevilla at the nursery and tons of both of these Incredible. so vining little bushy plants or some will climb up everything i mean tyler got a couple different ones and he probably has those planted at home but they are gorgeous that all different gorgeous. colors yes yeah. mm -hmm. Stunning. And then in front, uh -oh. we've got Tyler up in the corner once again. But there has been a leaf in front of David's laptop <laughs> that I noticed at the beginning mm -hmm. of the broadcast that looks fake. So I brought in a lot of caladium. I would say it's still a little bit cold, a little bit early to get your caladium in the ground. There's that leaf. They, Do you truly, see it? Are, they truly are a hot weather plant. Yes, mm -hmm. they will. I've planted them a little too early in the past and they just don't take and then they'll start dying. Um, I wait. Look at. Look at the detail on that yeah, leaf. That is Look how bright awesome. it is. It looks fake. It really but does. we do have some caladium mm -hmm. and we will get so much more. I am trying to hold off to buy mine until the temps warm up a little bit. I'm waiting until Mother's Day. We'll mm. see if I make it because I'm just so ready to buy it. And then next to it, coleus, which I also love. So we have so many different types of colors. We've got warm, we've got cool, we've got orange, a dark gothy color, hot pink, and then the chartreuse color down in front. There it is. Look at that. And then in front of that, we've got Lantana. Look at this one. Look at that. <laughs> look, wow. Look at this rust. It I is. Mean, it, it's, it's actually a deeper color than it appears to be. It's absolute color blaze, Sedonia. Austin and I that. both planted this one last year, this wow. exact same one. And mine turned into a shrub. I planted two really? side by side. It was huge. It was stunning. It held that color. It stayed like true to that. It was it was really, really pretty. And, and coyas are a plant. <laughs> There's that, Austin's that, hands. Sorry, he's <laughs> trying to get down to get that, that you, green one. You can also make tea out of coyas. Now, it is a, oh. it's kind of a sedative kind of a... It's Sleepy time tea. Oh, rat. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Sleepy night night tea. And then Lantana. Y'all, we all love Lantana. It is... It Attracts the pollinators. It turns into a shrub. I'm not seeing it right now, but there, there it is. is. So all those little colors, they remind me of Fruit Loops. I love how uh -huh. they smell. Uh -huh. I love Lantana. I plant it every year. Unfortunately, it doesn't come back, although I did oh. have one variety. I think it was... Well, Miss Huff, I hear, mm -hmm. kind of can perennialize here, but that's not the one that came back for me. It was Lucky Something, which I was very surprised by. I haven't seen any growth from that. But on to mm. what's down in front, we've got Regal Shield Alocasia. So this is a huge leaf. I actually have had one of these as a house plant in my home for about seven years now. They, they are stunning. They. Wow. They really are. Huge. Sarah Bates, who is helping me in a house plants, does a fantastic job. I love having her here. Actually cleaned all these leaves. So look mm. how beautiful these are. So glossy, so mm -hmm. shining, so beautiful. Mine tends to get spider mites, as all alocasia does, but I just give it a, a good clean cut all the way to wow. the dirt every so often, and that seems to take care of it. Because the leaves are gone. Because the leaves and, are gone. But they do sprout back quickly. Yes, yes they, they do. do. They do. But that's what we've got in room today. Again, it's a very, very small sampling of what we have here at the nursery. Oh, oh we oh, almost forgot about Lazy the Susan. Oh. There's that fade. Kangaroo Paw. Oh. Have you seen one of these before, Josh? No. These are really great. So tropical here. I have kept them. I overwinter them in the greenhouse here at the nursery. Um, but they really make a great cut flower. They'll stay in fresh water for quite a bit of time. And they they're are just, a naturally spinning cut they're flower. They're a naturally they are. spinning cut flower. <laughs> I love these. We've got them in. There's like a really cool blue color that we got last year. We haven't gotten that this year yet. But we get red. We get pinks. We get orange. And like Lazy Susan is demonstrating over here. We also have yellow. Yes, it turns out Susan's not that lazy. No, she's Susan busy has Susan. been working this busy entire Susan. show. But uh, that one reminds me a little bit of Bird of Paradise for some reason or another. Yeah, the bloom look. looks a little bit like a kind of yeah. a mini strelitzia. This coli is here too, folks. You, it, it was kind of hidden down here. It's, it's the goth coleus. Yeah, the Main Street Abbey Road with the green tint. Oh, oh I'm planning that one for sure. Beautiful. Well, beautiful. hey, let's go ahead and get to some more questions because we, we did get some live you questions see in. Out there? I yeah. did. Okay. Colin says I got staghorn ferns about a month a month or so ago, mounted on driftwood on the wall in same light level. 
Two are doing great, but one of one's leaves are thin while the others have thick, deep green leaves. Help. Mm-hmm. So with these all being in the exact same spot, like you said, with the same lighting, it makes me think that it probably has something to do with the root system. So when they were mounted, the roots might have been disturbed a little too much on that single one. I would say just go ahead and fertilize it, water it a lot, um, and it should turn that dark green again and be be happy. You can also put some fertilizer in a spray bottle, dilute it a lot, mm-hmm. and then you can spray like the base of that staghorn fern and that'll really help it out as well. Mm-hmm. I agree. Hey, Call. Hey, Call. Hey, Call. Hey, I we, saw you the other day. You bought annuals. Oh. Yes, I know. I talked to Colin he for a while. He does it every year. He does. Yeah. I, I, let me he quickly does. interject this before I forget. Uh-oh. I meant to do it earlier. Um, Bates Nursery, in conjunction with the Chestnut Group, are doing a um, support thing for Greenways for Nashville. Oh. And if you want to find it, this is a. Uh, we actually are just a sponsor. The Chestnut Group is the one who pr- provides all of the artwork, and it is incredible. Highly encourage. I've been to it for the last number of years. Uh, there's some stunning artists in Middle Tennessee. To find out all about it, go to Greenways for Nashville. That's F O R. Greenways for Nashville.org. Go to the events tab and then click mm-hmm. on the painting the Greenways. And when you go there, it takes you to this page and you can find out all about it. So check it out. Painting the Greenways. Uh, Sponsored by uh, mm-hmm. Bates Nursery and Garden Center and presented by the Chestnut Group for Greenways for Nashville. Yeah, the plein air style mm. is so cool, too. You need to go up to see them in person, folks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go get there. That that seems like it'll be a great event. Mm-hmm. All right. Transplanted my snake plant, but now I need to stake it up. Any suggestions? Pack that soil down. Um, <laughs> Austin and I do a lot of repotting here at the nursery, and people always have a lot of questions. And, you know, I've been repotting plants for so long, I don't think about how... You know, it's kind of second nature. You just nature. do it. I just do it. Yeah. So I would say with you repotting it, you disturb the roots a little bit, and now the soil up top probably just isn't tight enough. So get your hands in there. Just pack the soil down around the side of the pot. Make sure it's not in a pot that's too big because snake plants do like to be root-bound. They like to stay tight, and they can rot really, really easily. You can also get a lot of a little bit of rocks. I like the Enlightened, the Expanded Shell from Earth Mix. I use that a lot to just pack around the top of the plant and help hold it up. Up, but I really think your problem is just packing that soil a little bit tighter. Well, pretty much with every repot we do, we finish with rock because a lot of repots can be a little wiggly after you're done repotting them. That's just kind of part of it. So using the expanded shell, our enlightened that we have, we put that around the stems of the plant and it really helps that wiggle process. Tightens it up a yeah. lot. Tightens it up, yeah. And it looks really it good. It looks so good. That it expanded won't. shell is like one of my favorite products that we have here. I, I don't know why. Like I just a love, top I like dressing or you actually put it, it around it's, the top? It's, it's like top, top dressing. Dress. Literally finish with it's it. It's like then, a container mulch. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. I mean, yeah, I use it that for can a be lot used of stuff. to incorporate in the soil. Yes, you know? definitely. Mm. Mm-hmm. But as Aww. a finished top dressing, it looks it's great. beautiful. Yeah, mm-hmm. it gives cool. it kind of a desert look. Mm-hmm. Okay, so good plant or ground cover for shade or part sun, top of retaining wall that does not hurt the wall. Okay. So shade to part sun, Blocks? not going to hurt the wall. Creeping flocks would be fine for that. Um, Vinca Minor would be fine for that. A little aggressive, but it, it's it'll so it. aggressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, Creeping Jenny. Creeping Jenny. Again, really another good. aggressive one. Mm-hmm. If you want it to just cover. Yeah, I wouldn't call it invasive, but I would say it's somewhat it's aggressive. aggressive. It's easy to just pull it up to and be keep managed. contained. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's easily mm-hmm. manageable. I've yes. got some of it. I love hate it. It grows around a lot of things, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, what is a good bush that will hide my neighbors that also gives a pretty bloom? Not yeah. a boxwood. Not a boxwood. Mm. Not for this scenario. You know what? Like I talked about, let's go viburnum here. Let's go viburnum. Even if it's deciduous, it still does a great job because they stay in the house in the winter. Smoke trees. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, a number of the viburnums, they're in full show right now. Y'all look around town, the double file viburnums, the the Chinese snowball, they're great. They get Mm -hmm. big, they block out stuff, and they're so stimmy. Like like David said, they still have coverage Mm -hmm. whenever it's dormant, but they're great. Okay. There's a little uh, book from Josh to. We're Austin. gonna have homework for next week because I want to review on that one. Oh, Container Gardener's work. Handbook. It's <laughs> the farm, made by the Farmer's Almanac. I knew it excited you. You've I got homework. Okay. Oh man. Old Farmer's Almanac. So. I love that. Okay. Hey, there's some petunias in pots. There's some. Hey, speaking My of. My God. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Caroline. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, so we did get questions about pots. So speaking of mm-hmm. this container book, what can be planted in pots on a patio that will survive all season? 
Lantana would yeah. be mine. But it's bulletproof. Yeah. All see like I guess all growing season. I think we're all growing about. season. Yeah. Well, and tons of annuals. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're good yes. about your watering practices, right. I mean, for the most part, you can keep color going. In a but pot. if you're not yeah. good, lantana's <laughs> Lantana. a great annual. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it, it it doesn't get too hot, uh-huh. and if it gets dry, it doesn't really care. Yeah, you just it's water kind of it, it'll come right back up. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is people are on the opposite spectrum of that. So if you're too good at watering, don't grow lantana. All right. Because it. It, it doesn't want all that much water. So. Just figuring out those watering practices, that's always crucial. I yep. love Lantana. I'm going to grow it every year and talk about it. And don't grow it with other things that are no. more water yeah. needy. Exactly. Because exactly. you know, you'll, you'll wind up underwatering one or overwatering mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. other. So just you know, select your plants. It's mm-hmm. good to be grown by, by itself because it just takes over so much. I planted a Lantana, and then I planted a lavender, which the lavender did great, mm-hmm. but the Lantana grew into it. Killed off half of that lavender. Didn't do anything to the lantana. It did great. Mm. Um, our next question, I've got this same issue, and mm. I'm really worried about Uh-oh. it. Planted Japanese maple last spring, but it mm. still has no leaves. Mm. Is it dead? My Macawa, it's in a pot. It's got buds. It's still green. The stems look fine, but it is not leafing out whatsoever. Mm. And I don't know why. I really don't know how to answer this either, unless it is just dead. Because pretty much every maple is leafed out. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, Did, yeah. all Japanese maples I've noticed have really leafed out already. The all three or four that I've got are out. out. Yeah, yeah, was this that. in the ground or is it in, in a container? The ground. It theirs is in the, in the ground. ground. Mine's in a container. Theirs is in ground. Oh, I'm sorry, but if it still sounds has like a no woo. leaves. It sounds Stop. like a woo. I'm sorry. Sure. It happens. It happens. It's still too early. I'm so sad if yes. that's the case. I'm never buying another Jap. That's not true. No. <laughs> that's not true at all. Not true. Mm-mm. Hey, y'all, help. Oh, my oh. Hollywood junipers have yellow brown patches and are losing needles. Oh, okay. I want to mm. see how the rest of the plant looks though, because Hollywood does shed from the interior, like most all evergreens do. Um, and uh, Hollywood juniper specifically, the chinensis species, they took a hit last year in the freeze, and I bet they didn't like this year's really zero degree temperatures either. So it could just be residual damage from that. Um, but I want to see pictures to see how yeah. the rest of the plant looks, not just some of it. Yeah, get you a pair of. Good gloves, either leather gloves, and just put your hands up into it and dislodge all of that browning foliage. Mm-hmm. I mean, shake. I mean, from bottom up to the top, and whatever doesn't yep. shake out, then you can take hand pruners and carefully remove the other dead spots. Okay. And then fertilize it, yep. and you might want to go ahead and you know trim it up, shape it a little bit uh, before it starts to really flush. That'll get it back on the path. But uh, yes, it's uh, Juniperus chinensis. While it is quite winter hardy, we've we've had a couple of uh, years Burn. that have tested it. Yeah, and they didn't we like don't it. normally have issues with conifers at all, and uh, all of the camisiparis, uh were you know, negatively affected last year. Camisiparis. So sad. Camisiparis. That's a good so. word. Camisiparis. There you like go. So, huh? Music but, means. What's that music mean? I, how did it go so fast so every fast. Saturday morning? Hey, folks. But uh, I think we'll it's come. a conspiracy, John. It could mm-hmm. be. The that time warp that works, works against it's us. It's just a jump to the left and then a step to the right. I think that's a different, but oh, yes. Okay. But uh, every Saturday morning, Gardening Inside Out is going to come to you here from Bates Nursery and Garden Center, the Green Room Studios. You're going to see features every week with new stuff inside the studio, yep. and you're going to find out what's growing in and around and blooming in Middle Tennessee. Hey, if you've got those pictures, send them to us. We'd love to get those up, and we'll see those issues in particular. It really helps us out. Like us, share us, tell us ever, tell all your friends, all the neighbors, shake the dog, so yep. you can we can continue to do this for you. Thanks for joining us, folks. We'll see you right here here next Saturday morning from the Green Room Studio.